Hello, felting friends. So much has been going on since I've been away for a few weeks. Um, lots of gardening, lots of summertime fun. I don't know if you remember our little hamster friend, Cheese Puff. Sadly, we did have to say goodbye to him. He was such a great little guy and we will really miss him. Uh, so at least you got to see his little cuteness for while he was with us. So I also started a sweater. We took a trip to the beach and so I needed something uh, small for the car and obviously I couldn't video. So I've been working on a little sweater and uh, like I said, we went to the beach. We went to Top Sail Island in North Carolina. So that's where we were last week and we had a great time, but we are back to work. I did pick up some new hermit crab friends, and obviously this one is glass, but I'll show you uh, the real ones when we get them all set up. So, all right, into our project. I am going to be showing you how to do the legs. So here I am just taking some measurements. My dolls got a little bit bigger than the drawings, uh, but that's okay. All you have to do is measure so um, and add, you know, you can increase or decrease depending on your measurements. This is the PDF that was for sale on Etsy. And I decided that uh, I went about one inch larger. So I'm just going to add an inch when I do my feet. And you can measure that by um, holding your hand up to your face. And you can see that your face is... Uh, your hand goes from about your chin to uh, your eye line. So that's why the PDF is really useful because it just gives you a guideline of the correct proportions and then you can just see, okay, well, my body is an inch bigger than my drawing, so everything else needs to go up an inch. So just do some measurements and don't panic if you're off. Um, you know, you can always adjust. The PDF gives you that proportional guideline. And uh, again, you can find that on Etsy or just, you know, draw your own if you're capable of, um, you know, doing a little sketch. And then don't panic if your sizes are off. Again, it's a doll too. So, you know, it can be off if you want. It's your creation and that's fine. So I'm just... Um, finishing up my measurements and deciding how long to make the legs. So here I have my aluminum wire and I believe this is 16 gauge. Um, 16 or 18, 14, any one of those will do. Uh, it doesn't really have to be exact. You just want it to be able to uh, hold the weight of the doll. So I believe generally I'll, I go for 16 gauge um, and I can mark that in the comments. I'll put an Amazon link um, when I take a look there. So here I have measured out my wire. And then just go ahead and match them up. Get your measurements. That is, I believe, eight and a half. Eight and a half inches. Um, you're going to bend the top down, which I figure takes about a half an inch. So then, I'm just reading as I go. So you want to be, um, I had a six inch leg. I believe so, yeah. Six inches for my leg. <laughs> I'm watching my video, make sure I'm telling you this correctly. And then that left two inches for the wire on the bottom. So there, six inches for the leg, two inches for the foot, and a half inch for the loop at the top. So eight and a half inch long, and then the foot, um, which we'll get to that's out of clay, ended up being three inches. So let me go over those measurements again for you. So it is an eight and a half inch wire, half an inch for the little loop at the top where the hip socket's going to be, three inch, no, sorry, two inches for the bend at the bottom for the foot, okay? All right. And 
And again, your doll may be different. So there's two inches there. And then six inches for the leg. And I decided not to um, bend the bottom because there's really no need to. So I kind of did all this real time. So a lot of it is experimentation. There were some things that did not work. And um, I kind of cut out those, but I'll tell you as we go along. Um, it was a little comical with the clay. So the I am not one to work with the clay, I tell you. It was messy. So here, um, I'm all set up. I've got some wax paper. I have some tin foil for bracing things. And we're using epoxy sculpt. You have epoxy sculpt A and B. And I'm gonna show you how to mix those. You have a little pot of water off to the right. And gloves. You do need gloves with epoxy sculpt while you're mixing. It is a chemical reaction when you're mixing part A and part B. So I do recommend wearing gloves. Even if you don't have an allergic reaction the first time, from what I hear, you could develop one over time from the research that I did. Um, so I do recommend latex gloves. You need some clay tools. They can be anything. Um, silverware from your kitchen if you don't want to get, but don't use them again for food. Designate clay tools only for clay tools. Um, if you use a knife from your kitchen, like a little butter knife or a spoon, keep it for your clay. Don't go back to using it for your food again. Um, so here you're going to take out some part A and keep your tools separate that go into part A. Keep it separate from what goes into part B because once they touch, that chemical reaction starts. And if you mix your jars together, you're going to ruin your whole pot. So you can see I set my part A tool off to the left, my part B tool off to the right. Keep your lids separate. You do not want them mixing until you're ready. So you don't have to wear a mask or anything. Um, they kind of smell like Frito chips, but I've never had any respiratory problems after working with this clay. The research that I have done says it's perfectly fine. I, I do keep my jars in a plastic bag, um, even though they're sealed. All right, so there you're just going to start smooshing them together. Um, start with a small amount. Once you mix them, it, it's done. You, you have to use it. So you can always mix more. Um, and then water is going to be your friend when you're working with this clay. It's kind of like working with old chewing gum. It's not the most user-friendly product. Um, it's very different from the consistency of like your oven baked Fimo clay. I did make a little um, uh, stencil with the, with the bottom of the foot. And that one, the stencil does measure three inches. So you're gonna wanna, if you use the PDF, just extend that PDF, you can go use that, use the stencil that I gave you, but um, extend it out three inches. So I'm sorry, it, it did get a little bit bigger. Um, maybe your measurements match the PDF and then that's fine. Yours will just be uh, one inch smaller, which is what it was supposed to be. So go ahead and just cut around your stencil with an X-Acto knife. And then you can just peel it right off. And then there is your foot. So the reason that I did this with the clay is because this clay does not crack. It's air dry clay. Uh, it does not crack. It's basically like cement once it dries. And you can paint it if you'd like. I ended up, um, I'm going to be covering mine with fabric. But and this is just water um, off to the right here. And a little like rolling pin. I think it was for Play-Doh actually, that rolling pin. I kind of stole it out of the Play-Doh jar. So there you are going to put your foot, your two inch foot onto your three inch clay foot. And then just put a piece of the clay on top that's gonna seal that wire in there. This was a little fiddly, this part. So I did not enjoy working with the clay, but it's necessary. I don't really like wearing the rubber gloves. 
Um, some people are amazing with clay. I am, I am just not. <laughs> I, th I think it's difficult to work with. But all you need is that foot. So there's our foot all dry. And I put it on some craft felt from the store. You can use wool felt if you have it. Um, and then just cut around your foot. Make some little darts uh, or snips in the fabric. And you're just going to fold that up over. I started out with um, Eileen's fabric glue. So yeah, I started with the Eileen's fabric tack and it did not dry very quickly. So I switched to super glue and this worked really well. I like the gel brand. Um, unfortunately, this one, this one was a little bit on the empty side, so it was hard to squeeze. But I got enough out and then, of course, I got it all over my fingers. I just, the glue and the clay, I'm, I'll be happy when we can go back to wool. But anyway, um, so you're just basically covering the bottom of that foot with the craft felt. And it's just cheap craft felt from the store. If you have um, something nicer, you can use any fabric. Um, you can use real wool felt. You can make your own. You can use fabric. Whatever you want the bottom of the soles of your feet to be, um, like your shoe, then that's what you want to use. So I'm doing the witch's shoe, so I just am covering it with black. And then there's going to be an actual foot and shoe on top of this. This is just the sole of the shoe. So, um, yeah. And then, again, I, the clay is for um, a little bit of weight. So hopefully it will work out as planned and it will help trying to record this with a house full of people. It's very difficult. Anyway, I keep pausing and starting and stopping. So yeah, just um, any fabric you want, just glue it on there and it'll be great. You can um, paint the fabric afterwards if you want it to look like um, a dirty shoe. So and just use your imagination, anything you want, just get that fabric uh, glued on the bottom. If you don't want to do fabric and you just want the clay, you can paint it. The epoxy sculpt is really neat and um, you can just paint the paint the uh, bottom. But I thought just covering it with fabric. And I think also it will help having it covered because the plan is to have the foot and the leg in the wool. And so I will be able to st stitch the two together and have it be seamless and you won't see... Um, like a crack. So that's the plan. We'll see what happens. So here I have my core wool and I'm going to um, just start to wrap the leg. I have my medium needle. Um, you can use medium or firm. My workstation at this point was a mess. So I'm just going to quickly show you um, how to get started and then we'll end there for today. Um, you can finish wrapping your leg and I will pick the video back up um, with wrapping the leg and wrapping the top of the foot. I'm going to leave some space in between the wool and the uh, clay, the top of the clay foot. So don't worry about gluing that down. I want to leave a little space and the idea is going to be to be able to slip um, a sock in between there and then also the shoe. So I'm really excited for that part. I will show you that and um, it's going to be great. So just go ahead and start wrapping your leg and get your clay part done and your wire in there and we will pick this back up sooner than the last video. We're home now. Everything's good and um, we've got some house remodeling to continue to work on but I'll find some time for my dolls and for you guys. So thanks a lot. And don't forget to subscribe. Check out the Amazon links for any of the products. Uh, really, it was just super glue and the epoxy sculpt. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and reach out. And I hope you guys are having a great summer, keeping as busy as I am. And uh, yeah. All right. Have a great one, guys. Thanks. And let me know what you're working on, too. I would love to hear about it and hear from you. So, all right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.